okay, the numbers are in for 2017. And the headline over at Newsweek says it all. White supremacists killed 18 people in 2017, double the number of people from 2016. And then when you put that in the context of all extremists killing people, it was 34 in the United States last year. And 18 of them were killed by white supremacists. So more than half of all the all the basically terror-related murders in the United States last year, more than half of them were done by white supremacists. It seems to me that this is a story that should get a little more coverage. In the past decade, this is the last 10 years, white right-wing extremism made up 71% of extremist-related murders compared to 26%, excuse me, of murders by Islamic extremists. It's just remarkable. It's just remarkable. The New York Times had a piece, has a piece this morning. It's, it's uh, by Max Fisher and Amanda Taub. And it's a, a little video where they point out that, and you can see this over at the, at the New York Times website, uh, they point out that uh, over the last 200 years, we've gone from basically no democracies in the world, or a couple, ours being one of the very first, at the time that the United States became a democracy in, in 1787, arguably, or even 1776, there were you know, a few other countries uh, that arguably were democratic, but not many. And then we saw a steady rise up to the Civil War. And then during the Civil War, it kind of dropped down. And then a steady rise up to World War II. And then it kind of dropped down a little bit. And then after World War II, another steady rise to the point where about half of all the countries in the world are small d democratic. I'm not talking democratic, republican kind of thing. I'm talking about democracy in a republic. And now we're seeing so many of these democracies backslide into authoritarianism. We, we have seen it in the Philippines with Duterte. You see it in Russia with Putin. You see it in uh, Turkey with Erdogan. Uh, you, uh, you see it in uh, Hungary with Viktor Orban. Uh, it, it is happening in country after country after country that were formerly highly democratic countries. And we're seeing it in the United States, the rise of this populist authoritarianism that uh, Donald Trump is basically using the same playbook as the people that I just mentioned, who have taken countries that were fundamentally, at their core, had strong democratic institutions. Now, uh, arguably, Russia is the exception to that because there, there was just that very rapid transition period from the fall of the Soviet Union to modern-day Russia. During that time, there was some considerable democracy for a while, and then the Chicago boys came in with the Milton Friedman and, and friends. I mean, Friedman was gone, but you know his, his uh, acolytes from the Chicago School of Economics, who said, oh, no, you know, Russia should become an example of, of uh, you know, a libertarian country, a libertarian state. Let the, let the capitalists run everything. And, you know, it kind of turned less, shall we say, less than democratic, small d democratic. We're, we're seeing, and, and, and you know, and, and to some extent, you also have, you know, leadership pushing that. But I think that the, 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 the clearer example of this is probably uh, Hungary, Turkey, um, and the Philippines, although there's a bunch of other countries too. And so they're asking the question over at the New York Times, what's the problem? Why is it that democracies are starting to fail? And could ours? Is there something fundamentally wrong with democracy? And I would like to answer that question. And I think it's a, it's a really important question. And the problem is that the question doesn't include the problem. The problem is that the sales pitch we've been getting from the libertarians, the David Koch's of the world who ran for vice president in 1980 on the libertarian ticket, from the, uh, the, the right-wing billionaires, the, uh, the so-called objectivists, the acolytes of uh, Ayn Rand, uh, you know, Reason Magazine and the Reason Foundation, one of these Ayn Rand groups that somehow, you know, uh, uh, they're always popping up on MSNBC. These are hardcore right-wing cranks who are promoting the idea that capitalism is more important than democracy. That capitalism 
should drive democracy. That in a capitalist society, the fewer regulations and the fewer um, limits that you have on the ability of capitalists to influence politics, the better. This is their sales pitch. And that is the rot at the core of these things. Uh, in every country that I mentioned, and in the many other countries that are losing democracy or are sliding away from democracy and toward authoritarianism, including the United States, what we see is that the principal force pushing this kind of populism has been the looting, basically, of the working class of the country. The working class responding to being looted by the capitalists with anger. And then you get people stepping into the void, these populist politicians, the Donald Trumps of the world. You get these, the, the, the Erdogans of the world. You get these populist politicians stepping into that void and saying, as Donald Trump literally said, I alone can solve this problem. I alone can save you. I will be your defender. I will be the one who fights on behalf of you against those people who are screwing you. When in fact, these phony populists like Donald Trump are the people who are screwing us. And they're doing it through, through by, by elevating capitalism above democracy. Democracy is a form of governance. Capitalism is an economic system. They are completely different things. And capitalism will, if it's not limited, if it's not regulated, it will corrode, erode, and ultimately destroy democracy. And that's what we're seeing in, in country after country. Whereas democracy, if it is strong, can actually provide a safe space, a soil in which the roots of regulated capitalism, healthy capitalism, can actually grow. Now, obviously, I'd like to see a whole lot more than just capitalism. I'd like to see co-ops. I'd like, you know, there's a whole lot of other things that, that can be done. But in my opinion, this the, the Times article is completely missing the boat because they're unwilling to criticize.